call order the Tuesday, March 17th meeting of Monmouth City Council. And ask for also a roll call, please. Councilor Carey? Here. Councilor Guthrie? Here. Councilor Johnson? Here. Councilor Milligan? Here. Councilor Schaefer is excused. Councilor Silbernagel? Here. Mayor Obers? Yep. All right, for the vice lead, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you all. Um, consent calendar tonight consists of minutes from the council meeting on March 3rd and the work session that same evening. I have a motion to approve. Move approval. Second. Second. In favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Very good. We'll adopt those two sets of minutes. Very short mayor's report uh, tonight. Uh, first thing is we did have our council goal setting session. You all know that because you were all there. And it was very productive. Thought we got a lot of good stuff done. Um, the only other item I have is an application for a position on the Arts and Culture Commission from Carol Hoddle. I believe you all got the uh, copy of her application. If I could have a motion to approve her application for that body. So moved. Thank second. you. Moved and seconded. In favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? And with that, we'll turn to reports from council reps to boards and commissions and council Milligan. Sure. On uh, March the 5th, we had the February meeting of the Arts and Culture Commission. And um, one of the things that had been out there for a little while for people to participate in was the art survey. Um, that was wrapped up, and Scott mentioned that there were 25 participants in that, a little lower than we hoped for. Uh, but there are some people who have an interest in um, things relating to art, um, classes, and, and other activities that they could participate in, and I think we added a few new names to uh, contacts. Okay. So uh, that was, even though it was a small turnout, it was a positive turnout. And then the arts calendar, uh, we have a, um, the first mock-up of the calendar to be coming out shortly. And, uh, and so the commission is still trying to decide uh, which way they're going to distribute it and in what form. So that will be coming in the near future. And I'll let people know how that's going to be distributed to them. Okay. But it'll have more than your usual suspects of art events. Um, so the Wu events, um, which are somewhat easier to find where we get all the way down to the high school and the um, public schools where they're a little harder to find. Uh, and they'll be in one place for people to find that. Cool. And that's my report. Thank you, Steve. Councilor yeah, Guthrie. So the uh, library committee met and I'd say one of the big pieces of information that they discussed was a recent outreach program they did with the Kappa, uh, Katie Kai, excuse me, Kappa Delta Chi uh, for the sorority at Western Oregon University. And they did a children's book reading uh, and bilingual focus, so reading in English and Spanish. And so thanks to the student volunteerism through Katie Kai, we had a, a, perhaps a better accessibility for our Spanish-speaking public than we usually have at some of the children's events. So that was nice. One, one decision that was made was that the library, and I'm doing some of this from memory, I left my notes, please correct me if I'm wrong, but the library's closed on Mondays, correct? The people still show up to work. Um, so the staff is there, but usually Mondays are used to kind of tackle some things that when there's a lot of public coming in and out, things don't always get tackled. Um, there have been a couple of groups that have been grandfathered uh, into a policy where they could use the public meeting space room on Mondays. And there have been some incidents that have come up where the staff hasn't been as available as they probably need to be when that room is open to the public and there's members of the public kind of coming and going through there. So the library committee made the decision to negotiate with the two groups that have been grandfathered in to try to find either a different meeting time for them or a different meeting space for them so that nobody's put out but then at the same time, the library staff can really focus on Mondays on not having to worry about a lot of public coming and going during the closed hours, but instead getting things done to prepare for the week. Thank you. Councilor Johnson. Yeah, well, uh, Planning Commission was, uh, they had another hearing, so can't go to that. But on Historic, uh, Historic Commission, which uh, we met 
uh, with actually a representative from Independence that wanted to, they, what we're trying to do is get uh, both towns open on the same day for our historic walks or tours or understanding. So uh, they're going to get back to us from Independence. Uh, they sent out, actually, they took a lot of information from us. As you know, May 16th is the uh, day that we have the historic uh, meeting here in the uh, in Monmouth, and it, what it's going to be is strictly at the Bush House and not a tour, but they'll have handouts if you want to go look around, and it'll be 1 to 2.30 in Monmouth. So that's on a, at the Bush House on May the 16th, and that's historic. Also, they pretty well got down their, their design and their plan for the, the uh, uh, plaques that will go in the buildings that are historic. And probably a couple more times around and that'll be done, and be hanging uh, those on the, uh, on the different buildings. Okay. Okay. So I, I'm really I'm really happy with the independence deal. I think that'll be a, uh, try to work together. Mm -hmm. Very good. Councilor Curry. Uh, Mr. Mayor, members of the council, the uh, tree board actually will meet uh, this Thursday, the 19th, um, and the primary agenda item there will be the solidified plans for Arbor Day. And um, I, I think the two dates are looking at the uh, and there will be a planting during that that Arbor Day, the 11th. Um, of April of the 25th, I think, are the two dates that they're, uh, they will come down on um, on Thursday. So what, once that's done, there will be more information come forthcoming on that. Um, uh, so anyway, that's that concludes what I have. Okay, thank you. Any community announcements? Yes, I have one. Uh, this is from the uh, at the Montessori uh, School down there. Mm -hmm. On Saturday, March 21st, from 10 to 1 p.m., will be a free book for adults and children of all ages and free snacks. And what this is is Spring into Reading. It's a program that she started, and it's called Little Free Library Book Giveaway Day. So okay. this is on uh, March 21st, 10 to 1 p.m. Very good. I've got uh, two. The Central High School sent out their newsletter. A lot of good events in there, but I do want to highlight the concert and silent auction that's happening Saturday, April 11th at 6 p.m. Um, the band, the CHS band, is going to be presenting New Orleans, the birthplace of American music. And so I think that that's really great. Um, kind of shows uh, some of the local talent. But the main reason why I'm calling this out, I didn't even know such a thing existed. Apparently, Western Oregon University has a band that will be participating as well. They're an all-star tribute band uh, to the, the, the group Cake. And if you haven't heard Cake's music before, you've probably heard Cake's music before. Um, it's great. It's a lot of fun. And they're doing tickets to this event for $10. You can contact Ed Probst for more information and to get your tickets. Once again, April 11th, 6 p.m. Second community announcement, tomorrow is Megan's birthday, <laughs> March 18th. I want that in the public record. <laughs> <laughs> I, I notice you're not telling us how many, Marshall. Wise I'd man. have to do the Wise math. Man. I, don't, I don't keep track of that. <laughs> Okay, any Anybody? others? Yes, soup and pie on Thursday the 19th at right. the Senior Center, 11 to 1.30. Best lunch you're going to get for five bucks. Thank you. Uh, City Manager. Yep, thank you. A uh, couple of award announcements. The uh, Police Department had their annual awards, and thank you for the counselors that were able to make that. We had uh, David Ritchie, got the Officer of the Year Award. Um, he's actually reached an interesting status. He, he can actually go solo. Um, that's actually pretty rare. He puts in a lot of hours. He puts in like toward 200 hours of volunteer time, which is a lot more than your typical. Uh, survival skills went to Officer Reynolds. We had a life-saving award for Officer Kevin Renfro. And the Officer of the Year is Ben Simpson, actually a new police officer. But he's just really hit the, hit the road burning on everything, and he's done a really good job. So that was really nice we had that. And then also the uh, Chamber of Commerce had its annual Community Awards Banquet last week. And uh, the Monmouth Public Library won the nonprofit category. David Ritchie, who we just mentioned, actually got distinguished service based on that. He's also on the MyNet board. He does coaching. I'm not too sure when he is home. Um, that's a discussion with a full-time job and everything. So that was really nice. We got some good recognition of those various functions. Um, also, the uh, software conversion, we actually are live on the new software mm -hmm. at the city. And so they went, they were in uh, Utah last week doing training, had really good, to make sure the data all made sense and train. Now they're working out the bugs, which is invariable, so nothing goes smoothly at camp. Um, but I think they're working through it there. They think it'll be pretty good when you get it there. So. Mm -hmm. 
Then uh, let's see, a uh, street planning task force. They had their three meetings. Were very un Portland like. They had three meetings and they're done. And so they have a recommendation. Alex, we're, we're on a hiatus. Scott. We're on hiatus. But we're, we're going to bring the, the product to you guys at your next meeting. Hopefully, yeah. get some direction. And uh, the, the idea behind it is moving toward a street utility fee. To do that, we have to hire a consultant to actually build the whole system. We we'll start from scratch. So hopefully, get some direction from you there. And then just a. Uh, Note on the building activity, just to let you know what's going on around town. Uh, we actually have a, these are actually permitted, permitted projects. We've actually got 16 duplexes going, um, eight homes, three commercial projects. And then on top of that, we got about 39 units of housing in, in the Hopper Moore on the planning side that are coming in you know, various stages. So <coughs> things are definitely, definitely picking up. Um, we actually got word today that we have a 12 unit subdivision going in on church, west of the two churches. Um, and it's a 12 lot subdivision, and we heard word that they're all sold. I mean, they haven't even got final approvals. Mm -hmm. so, yep. so, that's what I had. Thank you. Okay. Can I ask you a uh, What is going on at the corner down there where the writing part of where you know, mm -hmm. is going to be? What's going on? The Walgreens. Walgreens. We're not exactly sure what it appears to be. We're almost wondering if they're going to put up a fence of sorts. Yeah. Something, because okay. we were seeing sleeves going down in it. I don't know, for some reason they decided that they wanted to fence it. We're not really sure. Well, you saw that. He's back working on it again yesterday. Yeah. Yeah, that's kind of our impression of what they seem to be doing, but I'm not sure. Should we make contact? I, 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 I tried and no. didn't get a response. But yeah. It's always worth trying again. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> maybe, maybe Larry can check in with his. Yeah, this person is like, no. Yeah, he's, got, he's got somebody who's kind of in the. Property uh, maintenance division. I think. Yeah, that might be one way to go here. Yeah. Okay, very good. Anything else? Okay. Uh, citizens' comment time. Uh, if you got anybody has anything that for items not otherwise on the agenda and a maximum of three minutes, you have something. Come on up. If you give us your name and city for the uh, record, please. Good evening, gentlemen. My name is Margo Lucas, and I live in Polk County in the Buena Vista area. And I just really wanted to introduce myself. Um, some of you have already met me. Um, I am a, um, an advocate and a person interested in operating a medical marijuana business. And I just wanted to thank you, for the most part, for taking a rational approach to marijuana. We really appreciate that. It seems like you've thought it through and have come up with a plan and we appreciate that. And I just wanted to also say that um, if, and there's still a big if attached to that, I am talking to law landlords and looking at buildings for sale, that type of thing, but if I do end up um, operating a marijuana business in your city, I want you to know that I hope that we will have a great partnership between business and government and that my door will always be open. If you have any questions, any concerns now, or in the future, I have, I'm going to leave a stack of business cards tonight just in case you have any questions. Um, and my door is open, and that's it. I just want to say hi and introduce myself and say thank you for the rational approach that you have taken. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> and turning to the business agenda, our first item is the 2015 annual liquor license renewals. And Sergeant Isaiah Haynes is here to fill us in on what is up in the last year on this front. Yes, and thank, you. thank you, Mr. Mayor, member of the council. Um, as the mayor said, it's the I have a staff report for the 2015 annual liquor license renewals. Um, I'll read through the businesses here, and I've done this um, just all in one document. So um, we have renewals for uh, Mobiji, Biomart, uh, Crush Wine Bar, Jay's 99 Grill, Monmouth Market, Neighborhood Market, Neighborhood Market 2, Sing Fay Restaurant, uh, Main Street Pub and Eatery, Pedals and Vines, Shell Gas Station, Beastie Beastie, uh, Rookie Sports Pub and Eatery, and Western Oregon. Um, going through these, um, I've compiled just some stats. I uh, looked at our uh, notes over the past uh, year, and um, most of these places we had no responses to. There's only been three places we've had any kind of police response to. Um, Crush Wine Bar, uh, we had arrested one person uh, who had admittedly consumed alcohol um, and uh, was driving under the influence. 
um, Main Street Pub and Eatery. Uh, we had seven people uh, who were arrested for DUI who immediately uh, consumed al alcohol at the establishment, um, and that is a, a, dr a drastic decrease from 2013. Uh, there were uh, two people arrested for uh, prohibited exposure, uh, which is urinating in public. Um, we also responded to intoxicated persons, uh, fights, of containers, and trespass. Um, at the Shell gas station, um, we had cited one person for minor possession of alcohol um, and misrepresentation uh, of age by minor and furnishing alcohol to minors. Um, we had other calls for service. Um, and I just opened up for discussion as needed at this point. Curious about your responded to calls regarding at the Main Street Pub, like number, intensity, severity, etc. Um, I don't have the uh, exact numbers with me. We have um, responded to several calls on there, anywhere from, and sometimes the way that things read in our, our system, uh, noise responses, things of that nature. A lot of times we get uh, disturbance calls, which you know they sound um, like there's a lot more to them, but we get down there and realize that there's no parties there to be contacted anymore. Mm -hmm. uh, but they come across the system that way, or fight calls that have dissipated by the time we've got there. So um, we have made arrests, but there haven't been, um, like I said, overall, it's been a drastic decrease over the year. Um, they've been working with us very well, and we've made recommendations. Um, you know, they follow through those recommendations. They have doormen, um, which have drastically helped. Um, They've been, it's been a good partnership so far, okay. I think. Very good. Uh, just one on that, Jay's 99 Grill, didn't they take the bar out? Um, yes, um, to my knowledge, I believe that they have. Um, so, but we haven't uh, been there for, for quite some time. Yeah, because I see no wine of beer on the menu. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. Thank you. Um, the question on the, on the Shell gas station, and, and it's just only a matter of clarification, but, um, You know, had one person for minor in possession of alcohol. Does that would all of that sort of all those things lead together that that they that they ended up in possession when somebody else purchased it at that store, or they could have uh, purchased it themselves mm -hmm. um, and somebody let us uh, down there for whatever reason to call. Somebody was suspicious uh -huh. of a fake ID or something like that. It's it's from the same incident. Sure. Yeah. sure. Okay, because that I. Um, wasn't quite sure how to how to construct that, uh, but but fine. I mean, I'm not. I wasn't worried about it. Just just curious. And um, and relative to Main Street uh, Pub and Eatery, I, I think that's you know because I know that there's been meetings with the owners and, and uh, all of that. It's, seems to me that's pretty good community policing right there. You yeah. know, we're getting we're, we're, they're the ones that will ultimately be responsible for that. But you guys are providing leadership. Um, to get them going in the right direction. So that's, I think that's really commendable on the, the department's part. Thank you. And it has been, like I said, a good relationship. They've been very open, um, you know, accepting our uh, our constructive criticism at times mm -hmm. and recommendations, and it's been, uh, they've been good to work with. Mm -hmm. so good. Yeah. Yeah. Council, if there aren't any other questions, we have a uh, proposed motion at the bottom of the staff report. Mr. Mayor, I move that we send uh, to OLCC a recommendation to renew all of the liquor licenses listed in this report. Second. Second. Okay, Marshall has it. And uh, those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? And get those set off. Right. Thank you. Uh, next item up is the public safety levy from the county. And we had a presentation last time around um, from the commission and the DA's office and the sheriff and so on and uh, at the conclusion of that presentation I asked council if there would be an interest in uh, a resolution of support and Mr. Councilor Shetterly has prepared said for us um, and with that if there are any questions for staff or any discussion on this one go for it. Yeah I have a discussion you know we were kind of at the meeting the last time. What I, what I didn't like was I thought that this levy was shoved through kind of fast. We're at the five years that we're gonna vote on it, if we vote on it or it passes. They really haven't solved the problem. When we questioned the board about what's their future, you know, are they gonna like split it up, maybe make a city, uh, county type deal? They said, well, five years, we'll see about it. Well, this is just like throwing money into a hole and then at the end of five years, half those people won't even be here. So trying to 
expand on what happened here. Uh, that's, that was the reason I was asking those questions. The more I thought about it at home, uh, the more I was kind of disappointed in the answers that I got from the county commissioners. This is going to be an ongoing problem. So throw it out there for five years, and then we try to readdress it. Like I say, half the people won't even be around. It, it needs to be addressed now. This is the time to set the program in order because they're not working with anything. They're going to start off from scratch. That was my one point I wanted to discuss was uh, I, I'm in favor, I'll tell you this right now, I'm in favor of cities getting charged one rate, counties for the other. I mean, we know we have a responsibility to pay for the DA. We have to pay for the jail. We have to pay for the sheriff to come help us with some items. We pay for the state police now, which helps our city at times on special investigations, or they do the DNA, don't do stuff like that. Okay, we're paying for that department. We're paying for the city of Mall, and they want us to pay for the county. And that's three, that's three police departments for one community year. So if you want road coverage in the county, then you should pay for road coverage in the county. We shouldn't, as a city, have to pay for all three. And if there's something different. That was my discussion, but I was kind of disappointed in what came out of the county meetings. I've been to one other meeting with them and uh, listened to the same program. And like I say, I'd, this was the time to really set a precedence in what you wanted to do in this county, and they just shoved it through. We need the people right now, and we're going to take the money and go. And, and I appreciate what you wrote up, too. On, on, you know, I mean, it might I just, ask you for yeah, but we had to do something, but I just wanted this. I wanted to put that out. But we're paying for three departments, mm -hmm. basically, in the state. So, John, I'd like to um, make a motion that we approve a resolution declaring support for the May 19th, 2015 Polk County Public Safety Levy. I make that motion just so we can get a second and open discussion formally on the motion. Okay, I'll second it. Moved and seconded. So, any further discussion on this? Any other comments anyone would like to make? So I, I think that um, the reason why I support this is that I think it is what needs to be done now in order to keep the system running. Because it, it's not a matter of being able to put it off a week or a month. There's no solution a month out. There's no solution a year out that doesn't include some sort of levy, unfortunately, on the community. How that's divvied up between the city and the county is, is um, more of an academic endeavor at this point because our system is set up that people arrested on felonies are going into the county from Monmouth. And the less funding the, the county has to deal with that, the longer those trials are going on. And guilty or not guilty, you know, I'll say the last jury that I sat on was a, a, a felony, it was here in Polk County, it was in Dallas, it was a felony case, and to the determination of the jury, the person was innocent. They want to get back on with their life, and they don't need that hanging over their head for six months, innocent or guilty. So I hear you, Royal, and, and, and I think I made my position pretty clear that last week that one of the things that appeals to me is that this is a, a five-year levy. This is not a permanent, ongoing thing because there are lots of questions about how we're going to deal with this for the next 10, 20, 50 years. Timber ain't doing it anymore. We've got to figure out something more long-term. That's why I support this. Uh, I, uh, I, I don't, uh, I, I, I agree with Marshall uh, almost verbatim. Uh, you know, I, I, when they came before the, the council uh, last time, two or a year ago, or 18 months ago, or whatever it was, um, you know, I asked, uh, Mike Ainsworth was the sort of messenger at that time, and I asked Mike, what is your long-term solution? You know, how are you going to fix this in the end? And, um, you know, he said, we don't know. Now, th that, that's, that's 18 months ago, or if that's when it was, or a year ago, certainly. Um, you know, the question might be asked, well, why don't they know more than, than what they, they do now? Um, I, I don't know the answer to that. They, 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 I'm not sure that they've given up on, um, you know, on Congress. Uh, you know, Congress is the one that really is Welshing on the deal. Um, and so there may be something yet uh, to come from that. Unlikely, but I think that that needs to be teased out. Simply to say, it, it, that that um, we need to have one rate for city and one rate for county. I don't necessarily disagree with that, but I don't know what that would be, and that's not something that can be dialed up quickly. I I don't believe so. Uh, when I read it, the, the one thing that I thought might have been lacking was 
Um, because I felt like one of the reasons that, that a number of us supported it was for that temporary nature. This is not a long-term solution. Um, uh, and, and that is not here, and appropriately so. But I, I do think that we need to have that on the record, that, that one of the reasons that a number of us supported it was that it was a, it was a fix for the time <coughs> being and um, not a permanent solution and that in the time whoever is in those seats will need to come up with some sort of a permanent solution for that. Um, so uh, that said, I'm, I'm a yes on this one. Yeah, I have probably a lot to say. Um, first off, I'll declare that I'm on the um, yes campaign uh, for this. I spoke at length with uh, Greg Hansen, um, Commissioner Wheeler, about a lot of those things. It's like, why isn't it a split rate? Um, what is the solution? Um, unfortunately, my frustration has been that I've asked those questions more than 18 months ago. Um, As did some I. of you know that I've shown an interest in running for a commissioner because I believe there are some solutions, but they're not getting put into place. Um, that being said, one of the things that's happened, and whether we're at the mercy of the, the federal government, um, my understanding was that ONC money and some others always had a sunset date, which was several years ago, and that we've actually gotten a lot of money um, beyond the sunset date because Polk and other counties have had to go to the, gov to the federal government and ask for more funding uh, to stay alive. But I still think we need to find a way as a county to, to handle our own affairs. And one of the things that, that Greg Hansen put quite well was that we're, we used to be like a, a family that had three working people in it, and now we're down to a family that has a part-time person working for it. And, and if we are truly, as citizens, residents of Polk County, a family, then we all need to pull together, even if it's for a short period of time, and make this levy work. Um, if we don't make it work, we're, we're all the worse for it. Um, the short-term uh, pain that some of us are going to have to go through to, to pay this, and I know that there are some people who are going to be hurting to pay this. Um, and I hope the commissioners can come up with a solution for that. But, but it's something that we need to do so that we can find the people who do have the solution, who can help move the county forward. And I don't know that five years is long enough to get the people to do, find the solution, but if we don't start now, uh, we're only going to be deeper in the hole when we do start. So. So I'm in favor of this as a stopgap until we can find a more stable way to, to fund it because I don't want to keep asking the citizens of Polk County to just, you know, every five years, you've got to give more money, you've got to give more money. I think we've got to find a stable way to, um, to fund a tax base in Polk County. And, uh, and I'm committed to working not only for this levy, but for that stable funding in the future for Polk County, personally, so, so I'm voting yes. You know what you mean? So I think the only thing I'd add is that, I'd, that they, um, they really did downsize back from where we were last round, and I believe are meeting, you know, trying to meet the immediate need, and again, it's temporary, so I would say that that's the reason I'm going to be voting yes as well. I'd just like to throw in that Steve, as you, uh, oh, before the last, shot at a levy. Um, I asked the questions about split roles and uh, the future direction of, of funding with the county and so on. And, uh, you know, I believe that that 18 months might have been better used than it was to build the case for this, uh, this levy. When I step back and look at Lane's uh, calculation that 45 cents a thousand means $90 a year on a $200,000 home, that's $7.50 a month for 
the county police protection, plus the jail, plus the prosecutor, plus the youth <coughs> services, uh, on and on. And um, a Supreme Court justice once said, I like paying taxes, it's the price you pay for civilization. And I can't think of anything that leads to much more civilization than police services and courts and prisons, unfortunately. We need those functions in this society and in this civilization. Um, I think that same justice went on to say, it's incumbent upon each and every one of us to pay as little as possible. But uh, this is one of those little pieces where I think we need to step up and pay maybe just a little bit more over five years to give the county some breathing space to figure out after 150, 200 years of timber, now what? Because I don't think that, you know, as you said, Marshall, I don't think that's coming back, <laughs> at least not at a scale that's going to uh, solve this issue. So, um, you know, I'm in favor of this thing. Uh, I would really like to have seen some changes made. They weren't. Um, that's why the commissioners get the big bucks, because they have to wrestle with this stuff. And this is the conclusion they came to. Um, absolutely willing to support uh, the idea of 750 a month to help, uh, particularly the prosecutor's office and the jail, the prison, to, to go forward. So um, I, I will as well vote in favor of this thing. Um, go ahead. Yeah, well, I'm sorry. I didn't say I was against us not paying. I just right. said the fair share. Right. Now, what really got me was the, the council or the commissioners said, it, and, and Hanson especially, was it's too difficult. Well, how can it be too difficult when four counties have it already? I mean, it's already there. Mm -hmm. The plan was out there. It's worked. Why Why was it too difficult? I mean, I, I understand what's going on. We're trying to get this thing going. we got to get it off the ground. But we also have to say, how are we going to tell them, get off your duff now, get busy on it, mm -hmm. so in three or four years you can put this program out there and be ready to go at the end of yeah. five. Mm -hmm. So how do you explain it to them? They walk out of here, we got five years, well, we'll worry about five years. Mm -hmm. That's my feeling. I mean, right. I'm not saying what, I don't mind paying it, it's just the no. way it's set. I, I didn't mean to imply that. Yeah, no, I, yeah. I, I did not on. mean to imply yeah. that. I, I, uh, I share your frustration on the yeah. uh, split roll yeah. issue. Yeah, I, I, I think we all do. I, and I think that it, it speaks on every one of us has said we, we appreciate the fact this is a, a short-term solution and we're hopeful for a long-term solution, but that doesn't change the fact there's a problem now. There's a problem that's been ongoing, frankly, for years. There's a backlog. And even with this funding, we will not be at the level we need to be. Mm -hmm. and, and so how do we do that? How do we get that message across? I think we're getting it across today. Even with supporting this, we're getting it across today. Mm -hmm. And I think that we as elected officials need to make sure that we continue open lines of communication with the commissioners around this subject. Yep. So, uh, with that, is there a motion to, uh, we have a motion, I'm sorry, yes, we have a motion. We'll call, we'll call the question. Oh, question. Ah, Mr. Mayor, I just revoked, yeah. really for the record, uh, I wanted to, to note that my work on this was done pro bono so that no public funds were mm -hmm. used in preparation of this resolution for the council. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. For the record. Yeah. Thank you. Very good. So, with our election laws. we do have a motion uh, to support this uh, resolution and a second. So, uh, I will ask for those in favor. Aye. 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 Opposed? And we will uh, pass that resolution on to the county. And now we turn to the first reading of an ordinance adopting new provisions of the Monument City Code. And Scott, do you want to give a little background on this before I get to it? Yes, yes. The uh, item is dealing with marijuana dispensaries, and there's there's a variety. You could just follow state statute would be one approach. Um, some cities are be more active with a variety of rules. Our council picked a, a real light touch, and so we got down to just the only thing we discussed is actually hours of operation as one of the in our code. Otherwise, they just follow the state statute. So we went ahead and we're going to set that per the code change in here that you'd be 6 a.m. to 8 p.m., and that would be it. And so, obviously, you have a very big ordinance to look at. The, uh, the title, I think, is, is about as long as the Aubrey <laughs> content. <laughs> I noticed that. <laughs> so we're looking for just our first reading night, and that's when we just go through its normal process. And, and, and this would be quick it. questions before I go to first reading? Just an observation. that There's, there's one uh, dispensary, I believe it's functioning on the, uh, in Corvallis, uh, on 9th and, not sure, Circle perhaps, 
And I noted their hours of operations are 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. So okay. we've got more, we got more flexibility right. than what uh, right. 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 But, right. but it doesn't matter. That's, that's, good. that's just fine. This is good. Okay. Any ordinance number there? Uh, we don't have an ordinance number until we actually get to uh, second reading. So at this point, I will read by title first reading, and then we'll take up second reading with an ordinance number and any further discussion, et cetera, next time around. Okay. So if there are no objections, I will read by title. Um, an ordinance adopting new provisions of the Monmouth City Code relating to facilities authorized by the Oregon Health Authority under ORS 475.300 to 475.346 to dispense marijuana pursuant to ORS 475.314 and repealing Ordinance 1342. And 1342 was our temporary moratorium on this. Okay. So we will uh, pick this up next time. Um, are there any council comments tonight? And hearing none, we do have an executive session tonight. Uh, I'll read that script quickly. Um, the City Council will now meet an executive session for the purpose of discussing performance evaluations of public officers and employees and ORS 192.6602D labor negotiator, that, labor negotiator consultations. That one's tough. The executive session is held pursuant to ORS 192.6602I, Performance Evaluation of Public Officers and Employees, and ORS 192.6602D, Labor Negotiator Consultations, which allows the council to meet an executive session. Representatives of the news media and designated staff or other persons shall be allowed to attend the executive session. All other members of the audience are asked to leave the room. Representatives of the news media are specifically directed not to report on any of the deliberations during the executive session, except the statement general subject of the session as previously announced. No decision may be made in executive session. At the end of the executive session, we will return to open session and welcome the audience back in the room. It is not anticipated that action will be taken this evening after returning from the executive session. And with that, I would request a motion to adjourn the regular meeting to executive session. So moved. In favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So, we'll take five minutes and...